good morning one and all i am udeshri working as assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering in st peter's engineering college today we'll discuss about solid modeling technique which is a part of unit 2 in cad cam in the previous class in, in it means in the last video we have discussed about surface modeling and wireframe techniques now let us discuss about solid modeling technique solid modeling solid modeling technique we also call it as a complete representation the reason behind calling this solid modeling technique as a complete representation is see in case of wireframe model you can just find the lines so everything will be represented with the lines and that uh, model is more confusing because you cannot differentiate between the lines which are at the back and which are at the front and at the same time we cannot say whether the component is a hollow component or a solid component and there is a lot of confusion if you go for the models which are uh, very complicated and at the same time wireframe model cannot be used for machining purpose in the sense you cannot generate any nc program or else the process sheet with the help of wireframe model the, uh, to overcome the limitations of wireframe model we have come for surface modeling in case of surface model you will get a surface over the uh, required frame means required the wires but the thing is you can, here also you cannot say whether it is a solid model or a surface model it means whether the component is hollow inside or filled inside but here in case of solid model you can differentiate between between a hollow component and a filled component by taking a cross sectional view cross sectional view in the sense if you have some component you can cut it in the middle in the software and you can see what are the things which are present inside so that is about solid modeling so this solid modeling can be easily drafted it means once you produce the model and if you open the drafted sheet this component will get projected over the sheet in all the views and dimensions will also get generated automatically so the controlling of views and the controlling of dimensions is depending upon the person who is drafting so based on your convenience based on the things you want to see you can make the drafting and also you can make the dimensions it means you can make it in two way the system will also generate or else if you want to make you can make a uh, drafting of this and at the same time this solid modeling technique can also be used for making nc and uh, nc programs and also in generation of process sheets so this is how the solid modeling will help us to understand the design and also the manufacturing it means both the design and manufacturing will become easy with the help of solid modeling so now in order to understand the solid modeling techniques we have to know what is geometry and what is topology so now let us discuss about what is geometry and what is topology so now if you look at the first figure here okay and this one consider these two see here you have same geometry and different topology so now what is geometry and what is jo uh, topology geometry will explain you about its length means all the dimensions it can be length or width or radius or height or whatever it just represents the dimension and topology will speak about the connectivity between the edges so now here you see it is written as same geometry and different topology same geometry in the sense same dimension so here you see l1 and l2 are of same length uh, l2 so this l1 and this l1 are of same length this l2 and this l2 are of same length and this length and this length l3 and l3 are same okay here radius is same and here also the radius is same here also you have the same center and here also you have the same center so here geometry is same it means all the dimensions are same but here you have two different figures these two figures are not same in the sense you have a different topology it means the connectivity between the edges is different but the dimensions of that particular figures are same so that's why we are calling these two things as same geometry and different topology but here if you see these two figures we say different geometry and same topology so here see l1 l2 l3 l1 l2 l3 radius and radius see here also you are representing l1 l2 l3 l1 l2 l3 r and r so here there is some angle okay it means there is some difference in the geometry but the thing is here the, the connectivity between the edges is same see l1 is connected to l2 l2 is connected to l3 and l1 and l3 are connected to the radius 
so here you have the different geometry but same topology so here the point which we need to remember is geometry will speak about its dimensions like length width height radius etc and topology will speak about the connectivity between the edges okay so these things we have to remember in order to understand the concepts which are coming next okay so primitives we have already learned about primitives in the last unit but here also in order to understand the coming up techniques geometric techniques we have to know what is a primitive so i am revising it once again but here we'll understand about primitives in depth it means more than what we have learned in the last class so here the first one is cube okay now in order to define a cube see primitives are some geometric techniques or geometric models Uh, which are used to make some solid models so we take these things are basic shapes in order to get the required geometry so the first one is cube so in order to define the cube what we do is if x not y not and z not is the origin and x y z are the axes it means our coordinates then we represent this cube with its length width and height okay see for example if you are taking origin here at this point so the length huh, the length and this width and this height so these things will represent a cube similarly for a rectangular prism or else a rectangular box whatever so here also if you are taking x not y not and z not as a origin and xl yl and zl are its coordinates then we represent this Uh, rectangular box or a rectangular prism with x with its length width and height okay so this is about prism and next one is a triangular prism or we also call it as a wedge so here in order to represent a wedge we take origin at this point and we represent the wedge with its length and height similarly this we call it as a sphere we represent if you can take origin anywhere so if x not y not and z not is an origin and if uh, you have the origin of uh, this sphere at some point uh, called uh, x c y c and z c then we represent this sphere with the help of the radius r okay similarly here is a cone cone is represented with its radius or diameter and the height and if it is a truncated cone truncated in the sense the cone which is cut at the top if you have a truncated cone then we have to represent two radiuses it means radius at the bottom radius at the top and also the height next one is torus so the axis of the torus will be in the middle so in order to represent the geometry of this torus we define two things first thing is see generally this torus is formed by rotating a circle around some axis it means if you have some uh, axis like this and if you have some uh, radius or a circle like this now now if you rotate this circle around this axis then you get a torus so here we'll represent two things first thing is the distance of the circle from the origin or from the axis and also the distance of this circle uh, um, center from this circle center it means we have to define distance between two centers and distance between this and and the radius of this torus and radius of this circle so these things we define Uh, next one is a cylinder in order to represent a cylinder we make we define the radius of a cylinder and also the height of the cylinder so this is how we represent the primitives it means these standard shapes will be already available in the software we have to just give the dimension of the thing which you want to import into your software so this is about different types of primitives and next one is boolean operations boolean operation is where we Uh, get a new model by applying some uh, by adding or intersecting or subtracting some model from the existing model in order to get the required model to understand this better let us take this example see for example if this is a square and this is circle consider this square as a and circle as b okay union is a plus b or a union b okay intersection is c the whatever the intersection part intersection points which you have between a and b 
okay here you have subtraction see this is b and this is a and here we are subtracting b, means here it is b minus a it means we are subtracting a from b this is addition it means adding of two see union and addition both are same okay so that is so this is about boolean operation now in order to understand the next next concept in in the same video we should know what is boolean operation and what are primitives okay now let us see about geometric modeling techniques we have different geometric model techniques first one is boundary representation next one is a constructive solid geometry next is sweep representation this sweep representation is divided into two types that is linear sweep and non linear sweep and linear sweep is also two types like extrusion sweep and rotational sweep and next one is a hybrid sweep and invalid sweep next one is uh, space parting representation we have two representations here spatial occupancy and cell decomposition so now let us look at all these things in this video first one is a boundary representation uh, we also called we also call this boundary representation as b representation so here we use both geometry and topology to represent the component so what how we define the geometry and how we define its topology see here you can see node 1 node 2 so on so these are the nodes so these are the nodes so here you have nodes so all these points are the nodes so the nodes because of the nodes you will get the length width and height so here you are getting the geometry at the same time see you have faces edges and vertices so we are joining these things okay so here you have topology so boundary representation is where you use your geometry and topology and join the surfaces it means make a boundary in order to get some solid model so that is about boundary representation next one is a constructive solid geometry see as i told you here we are using different primitives and also we are performing some boolean operations so here what we do is see see this is the final part which you want okay in order to get this final part what what the things we have to perform so that is this constructive solid geometry representation or c representation so what we have to perform is see first we have to take this block and then join with this block so joining is called union so here you see this is the part 1 and this is the part 2 and this is the union it means you are joining and getting this l shaped block okay and from l this this l shaped block in order to get this circle you have to subtract a cylinder okay so that's why whatever the part you have got and from so from this you are separating this part 3 it means this is see this is a boolean operation subtraction minus so you are subtracting this part and getting the final part it means first you are making an l shaped part and then subtracting a cylindrical part so this is a c representation that is constructive solid geometry representation next one is a linear sweep linear sweep is of two types first one is a translational or extrusion next one is rotational so in case of translational sweep what we do is we make one uh, required figure and then we extrude it in the required direction see if this is the figure now we are extruding it in defined direction so this is called a linear sweep or a translational sweep next one is a rotational sweep see this is a rotational sweep so here uh, we have an axis and you have a required 2d sketch of the model so what we do is we make only just this line and we just rotate it along the required axis in order to get the required figure yeah see if this is a re required sketch and if you are rotating you will get the 2d model so 3d model of required sketch so this is about rotational sweep so this is the translational sweep and this is the rotational sweep so these two will come under linear sweep next one is a non linear sweep in case of non linear sweep will be having a curve and the required figure the 2d sketch we are, which you are making will get sweep along the given curve so this is a non linear sweep next one is a hybrid sweep hybrid sweep is a combination of linear and non linear shape 
okay so here here you, you can make this uh, non linear shapes in different ways so here see for example if you have this l shape block okay you can extrude if you are extruding in different directions then it is also a hybrid sweep or else if you are making this l shape and subtracting this from this means uh, you have this block first block and if you are separating it from second block then also it is an hybrid sweep it means if you are co combining both linear and non linear sweeps or else you see if you are having straight lines even if you have a curve here and after that you are making some boolean operation it means you are combining both linear and non linear sweep in that case also we call it as hybrid sweep so wherever you have combination of different types of sweeps then we call it as hybrid sweep next one is a invalid sweep though it is invalid sometimes we use this what generally we say is when we have not performed sweeping operation correctly then we say this as invalid sweep but the thing is in nowadays while making some components sometimes we are performing this type of sweeps also it means see for example if you have some component like this which is very straight and if you are taking the path uh, it's a angle and if you are performing some operation and subtracting the required curve from this then we'll get this type of sweeps so here that we call it as an hybrid sweep but when uh, we are getting a errored figure in that case we call it as invalid sweep next one is spatial occupancy enumeration in the sense see you have a component divided into small small blocks okay so what we do is we have a big component and that component will be divided into small small parts so the main purpose of dividing this component into small box is to perform some analysis analysis in the sense before making the component practically we make a 3d model and we divide it into small small squares and perform a stress analysis or any analysis stress strain total decomposition any analysis which you perform so here as we are dividing the component into very small 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 blocks we will get an accurate result in the sense where you are getting more stress where it is getting deformed to the larger extent so all these things can be understand so spatial occupancy is you are dividing the component into small small cells and this is more suitable for performing the analysis that is about spatial occupancy enumeration next one is cell decomposition cell decomposition is see here you have different different uh, primitives we will just join the primitives in order to get the required component but the one thing which we have to remember here is no um, uh, what is no primitive will overlap with another primitive so there is something in the middle called glue so it just joins both the uh, primitives but it does not uh, what uh, means it joins both the primitives but it, there will be no intersection between both the primitives so this is about cell decomposition but here we use different different components i uh, mean different primitives but what we say is uh, spatial occupancy is more suitable for performing the analysis when compared to cell decomposition so both the things in case of spatial occupancy enumeration and also in case of cell decomposition there will be no intersection between any of the primitives so the smallest components here this small small box are called as voxel v o x e l so so these are the smallest cells uh, which are used for performing the analysis these small cells means any component can be divided into this small small cells the smallest part of that of any component is called as voxel so that is about uh, spell, uh, spatial occupancy and cell decomposition so here see if you look at this figure you have some uh, triangular block and also you have some rectangular box and you have two square blocks so so these are the primitives so be, uh, with the help of these primitives we are making some component this is called as cell decomposition so this is about surface modeling technique thank you